you all want to jump on your in your jump driver, what's on that, that folder on your desktop, there is a, oh, let's see here, where is it here? There is a Excel spreadsheet called SP Budget Template. And you can open it up. I think that's fine, you can just watch because you have it on your, on your um, laptop. But it has a budget spreadsheet similar to what I showed you up there. And this one, you'll see down here there are two tabs. The first one says blank and this second one is the example. This is one that's filled out so you can see how it works. But you got your, um, your personnel folks who are very creatively named here, you can see. Um, and again, you've got their role, their, pro their percent of, uh, of time on the project, which in this case is this, uh, for the project director is 10%, annual salary is 150. So the project salary is just a formula of those two times each other. Then the benefits rate, in, the, in this example, is 27%. The benefits amount is that 27% times the project salary. And then over here on the end, you have the total for that individual. And then you've got three others like that, and then gives you a total here for your personnel costs. Mike, just a note. Something different this year than I've seen in the past is that for those that meet that, that cap, um, you have to somewhere in there show what their actual salary is. Oh, right, right. That's right. Tony pointed, made a good point. If this, uh, if this individual's true salary was, say, 300000 you would have to use the cap of 179.7 right here. And then down at the bottom, again, with what you submit as the grant, you would have to have an asterisk and say this individual's salary, their, their actual salary is this, it's 300000 The other thing is that the fringe rate has to be based on, on that 179.7. Right. Not on their actual right. salary. So that then that would be... Right, right, right. And again, if you look in the um, in the FOA under the budget, there's an example of of of, a, of of how that works for somebody who exceeds that salary cap. Um, out of state or travel again. This is this is put a, this is put together by out of state uh, and then in state, just as a suggested way of maybe doing this. But let me just show you. I mean, so for say example, the MSC program meeting. In Washington, you've got different expense items, airfare, lodging, per diem, and then transportation costs would be reasonable examples. This is the type of detail that a budget reviewer or a reviewer would want to see and look at, just so they see you've, you've thought through these. Uh, you know, you, you, use, you can use estimates here. You can, you can use based on past year's actual numbers, uh, which what we, what we do often. But airfare, for example, is... Um, you know, say it's seven hundred fifty dollars. This says number of units per person. You buy one plane ticket per person, regardless of how long they stay. But you have three people going, and so your total over here is just a computation of these three cells times each other. How are you doing this for the four years? Well, this is this is a one-year budget right here. I mean, what you see right here is you could build for one year. Now, if you wanted to, you could you could build one of these for each of the four years, or you could um, you could actually. I thought you, that's what I was asking about, it's the one, the sell sheet you did all four years. This is just a one year. But um, you, can, you can actually build in here uh, and actually make it fit onto, a, on, onto one page if you wanted to insert this into a document. Because you can like take out this fringe benefits rate. You don't have to show that as a column and you can have, you know, you could actually have years one, two, three, and four. Um, um, you know, in, 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 you, could, you could insert those in these columns here. You could also say in the budget narrative, you know, that your, you know, budget, uh, year one is, is, you know, amount in the table and then years two, three, and four, it may not even change, or if it does change, I mean, it, it, you could probably list those amounts there as well. But um, lodging, say it's $195 per room, and you're going to need three nights per person. You've got three people. So the total is this. So this, um, this template is built so you can actually plug in your numbers into uh, these, these areas where it talks about you know, a unit cost or a project FT, an annual salary, and then the other numbers will populate. But you do have to put, obviously, your, uh, your numbers in in these areas. 
Um, you know, uh, the per diem is whatever the per diem amounts are, and then you have to plug in how many people are going and or how many uh, you know per diem is. This is a daily per diem, and you got four days at the meeting, and then times three people. Um, and let me just show you one thing. And then supplies here, again, supplies tend to be, you know, you just describe here papers, folders, writing supplies, so forth. And you, you probably just have a, an amount over here that's, that's estimated or projected. In some of these areas, you're going to have to come up with some sort of a number that looks a little bit funny to really get your numbers to meet $130,000. That's understood by a review committee. You just want to make sure that your expenses are reasonable. In the, in the ballpark of being reasonable. If you had, you know, $10,000 for papers and pencils, they'd probably be a little bit concerned about that. Uh, could I just ask? Please. When you uh, budget higher models under supply, uh, just try to be, try to provide some itemized detail, you know, anything over 4000 5000 6000 we begin to question papers of pencils worth five thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, some ideas could be breaking it down by month so that you know you have a smaller number to start with. And then, you know, twelve months times I mean divided by five thousand dollars would come up to what? I don't know, somebody. Twelve thousand divided by five? Yeah. Twelve twelve months divided Sorry. by five thousand would be six hundred. $600. So it's $600 per month. This is just an example. You don't have to follow this. But it's just to break, break the, the amount down a little bit further. Um, at one time, you know, I mean, how do you, break, how do you put pencils at 0.35 cents times 1,000 pencils? To, you know, that's ridiculous. But what I've seen that has helped, that has been okay is uh, by month. But then you provide more details like thumb drives, uh, you know, like the educational supplies. The details here is very good, but it, just to break it down a little bit further, because when the amount is so high, that's where the questions come right. Okay, so, so more detail is always better. Yeah, more details more better. Good question over there, Mike. <coughs> yeah, so. yeah, that happened to me on my uh, last continuing app. I, I put these numbers in there, and um, I had to provide Mickey with a sufficient level of detail to justify how I got to those. And um, so, I, you know, if they're going to continue that level of sort of scrutiny, I would suggest that you not just plug in a three or a five thousand dollar supply thing because she will come back and want you to to justify it. Right. And again, that could easily be done, say, in, in the budget narrative when you talk about supplies, you could, you know, you could list out, again, the types of things and, and, right. and, and, right. and, and anticipated amounts for each, and then, your, and then your spreadsheet here would just, you know, would show a total, or you could do it right in the spreadsheet as well. But, in, in, you know, in general, more detail is better. Um, uh, other expenses, such as an office communications or telephone services or a wireless card or, you know, medical equipment. Um, gift certificates for survey completion, that could be a, 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 a educational supply or a, or a supply. Um, so if you go across here, your total right here, um, sorry, this is not fitting on one screen. I'm going to have to just size this down a little bit. Your total direct cost is essentially just adding up all of these categorical totals up above. And then you have an indirect rate of, say, in your institution, it's 21%. That's just a for this example. So if you go here, it's it's this figure here times your total direct cost, which equals 22,561. And then when it added back to your direct cost equals 129,997, and you have a three dollar balance. But I mean, 129,997 is close enough. What's that? Ten more pencils, T says. So, anyway, in your blank example here, uh, you have the exact same thing, but it's just it's not it's not filled out. So you could actually use this to start to populate, you know, for your um, you know for your state names of people, FTEs, salaries, and so forth. But the the uh, 
the formulas are already built in, so once you start putting those numbers in, then the formulas will auto-populate. Let me just show you, and then again, you'll have to put in your institution's rate right, right here, so that, uh, so that calculation will work. But let me just show you one thing to be very, very careful of. If, say you had a fourth person on this project that you wanted to um, insert right here, you could go right here to row eight and insert a, uh, a row and say, you know, this is Joe, who is, a, you know, admin person and this person is on 20% and, you know, their annual salary is 25000 and anyway, you, you, if you copy all these formulas down, you, you could fill out those numbers for that person now. But the problem is, is your, night, your total here does not reflect that new row that you just put in. Because the total here was only based on summarizing those first three rows that you put in. So if you put in a new row that's at the end of your current selection, you have to make sure that you drag your um, you drag your formula for this total so it includes the new row because otherwise it won't update and you'll have the same number you did before. So just be very careful about that when you're working in the spreadsheet. And then you have to do the same down below for the total of that one. No, uh, no, because see that total that total did when it when it when we inserted a new row, it recognized here that the new cell to sum was this one, not not the one above it. So well, sometimes depending on how you set it up, it might not. Yeah, it might not. I mean, so sometimes Excel will, you know, guess is right, and sometimes it doesn't guess at all. Sometimes it guesses wrong. Point is to be very careful and to review, review, review. Okay, I think. We're out of time. But you have the spreadsheet there to play with and to use. Um, it's on your, your desktop. So we let people play with it for just a little bit and have any questions. You want five yeah, or ten minutes wanna, to try out with the play? Then in case there's any questions, Mike can answer them while he's here. Ten minutes or so. Do you people want to plug in some numbers or what do people want to do? 